Bird's example. Um, and we're going to do everything that we've learned to do in this chapter. This is kind of like a review question. Um, in this question, we're going to make our scatter plot. We're going to find the line of best fit. We're going to find the correlation coefficient r, and then we're going to find the coefficient of determination r squared. So first thing you need to do is go ahead and look at your data, decide what you're going to count by on your x and your y axis. So let's see if I look at the x's, I need to get to 18. So I could probably count by twos because I know I've got a 10 by 10 grid. Um, my y's are only going up to nine, so I'm just going to count by ones. So go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and graph your scatter plot. <clears throat> okay, so your scatter plot should look something like this. Double check that you have labeled your x-axis, y-axis title that you're counting um, and showing some sort of scale. So we're finished with A, B, find the least squares regression line. Well, B, C, and D all involve us filling in this table. So please make sure you can fill in this table. You are going to have to be able to create this table on your test paper, not just fill in um, and use the information that's given to you like in WebAssign. I will not be giving you all of the sums and things from this table on the test. You're gonna to have to generate it yourself. Okay, so pause the video, fill in the X values, the Y values, square all the numbers in your X column, square all the numbers in your Y column, multiply the X and Y column together, and then add up your totals and we'll check our answers. Okay, so take a look at this information here. And we should see um, <clears throat> make sure all of our information matches up. And then we need to go ahead and find our least squares regression line. So for part B, we're going to do our calculation. In order to get our least squares regression line, remember there are a couple things that we need to find. The first one is that we need to go ahead and find our slope first. So B, which is our slope. Okay, turn back to your formula if you need to. It's N, and let's see, in this case, I think our N is 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 for N times the sum of our XY columns minus the sum of our X column, which is 103, times the sum of our Y column, which was 47, divided by um, n, which is 10, times the sum of our x squared column, which was 1347, minus the sum of our x column squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause, put that in your calculator, and see what... Okay, so I put that in my calculator, and I got negative 0.49. So I can see clearly from my graph, I do have a negative slope. Um, and um, so this is at least a reasonable answer. So we're going to go ahead now and we're going to calculate A. Um, remember that to get A, which is our y-intercept, we're going to need the mean of our x and our y. So remember to get our mean. In this case, it's going to be 103 divided by 10. Okay, The sum of the x's divided by the number of x's. So that's 10.3. And then our y bar is going to be the sum of our y's divided by the number of items, which was 10. So our y bar is 4.7. So then we can go back to calculating a. a is y bar, which is 4.7, minus the value we just got for b, negative 0.49, times x bar. And our x value is 10.3. So go ahead and put that in your calculator and let's see what you get. Okay, so I get 9.75 for my A. Okay, and if we look at the question, it said find the e least squares regression line. That means I have to write the equation of the line. 
y hat equals a plus, but in this case my b is negative, so minus bx. This is the answer to part b. If you don't get this far, you haven't answered part b, you will not get credit for the equation of the line. Okay, part c says find the correlation coefficient. So that's our lesson from earlier in the week. So we need to go back and we need to look at our formula for getting R. Okay, so go ahead and flip back, find your equation for R, and we're gonna fill that in. Okay, so we need N, which is 10, times the sum of XY, 343, that's gonna look familiar, minus the sum of X, which was 103, times sum of y, which is 47. So it's the same top that we have for b. And on the bottom, we have the square root of n, which is 10, times the sum of x squared, which was 1347, minus the sum of x, 103, squared. So all of this should look familiar because these are things we just did square root of n, which is 10, times the sum of the y squared column, which was 295, minus the sum of the y column, which was 47 squared. So you can see this top and this radicand right here are the values that we got right here. So part of this we've already done. So the top is negative 1411, under this radical, which I know is 28, 61. So now I just have to figure out this value and calculate my answer. So pause here and do that. Okay, so when I put that into my calculator, I got an R value of negative 0.969, which tells me I should have a negative slope, oh I do, and that it should be a pretty close fit to a straight line, and I can see that my dots here, if I look at my graph, they are very linear in nature. So that's why we're getting such um, an R value so close to negative one. Okay, D says find the coefficient of determination. Well, that's very simple. The coefficient of determination just means that I take my R value and square it. Okay, so if we go ahead and put that in our calculator and square it, we get 0.939, okay? So this tells us that approximately 94% The variation in the y values is explained by variation in the x's. Closer this is to 100%, the better a predictor your equation is. So if you fill in an x value, the better prediction you're gonna get for your y value because the variation in your x's, picking this x versus picking that x versus picking that x, is going to show up in the resulting y values. Okay, so there's one more example there. If you wanna try that, I will post the answers to that um, later. Um, but otherwise, you can go ahead and get started on your web assignment.